child who's loved reading storybooks of all kinds, from fantasy to stories in the Bible. There's nothing that's brought me more joy than opening a book cover, flipping through the pages, and discovering a hidden map. That's right, there are all kinds of books out there, but books with maps, to me, were extra special. A map in a book was a sign that I was about to go on a journey, traveling through a world created and imagined by a writer. They took me to faraway places, sometimes even places I've never been, but the experience was so brilliant that I remember it to this day. And it's no wonder that writers used maps as an integral part of their creative storytelling process. This map here. I remember reading The Treasure Island with my father as a child. I can still hear his voice. The adventurous tale of sailing aboard the Hispaniola in search for buried treasure. The entire story's plot revolves around a map. And of course, this one, The Lord of the Rings. I can't imagine reading this story without the map to guide me. Frodo's and Sam's journey down through the Shire, to the misty mountains, to Moria, and then finally to Mount Doom in Mordor. Every strange place name has a story. For generations, writers have used maps to bring to life their written narratives. And so in today's world, where we talk about videos, audio, podcasts, all kinds of other communication platforms. What does storytelling with maps look like? Thanks to geospatial technology, we have moved from paper and static maps to today's maps that are interactive, dynamic experiences. You can even combine video, audio, text, and images all centered around a map. With a degree in geographic analysis, I started my journey in my career doing GIS mapping. GIS being Geographic Information Systems. I did everything from working with local governments and engineering firms, mapping city infrastructure to economic development sites. And I loved that I had learned so much. I had these in-demand, marketable skills but failed to see how I could use any of that in my community. And by that I mean, how do I use maps to tell the stories of those in my community? You know, the human interest stories that talk about people and places that convey emotion. How do I humanize this technology? At the time, I didn't have many examples around me, so I decided to figure it out on my own. I ventured into media relations and communications, and in this world, I started telling stories, presenting them in various digital formats, video and audio, written narrative. And along the way, realized that almost every story, most of them, had a geographical context. Places were a big part of these stories. And so I'd figured out a way to combine my love for maps with storytelling. I had one more tool, one more innovative way of telling compelling stories. And not only that, but to present them in a way that hasn't been told before. This map here, I made this for my alma mater. I have a passion for getting more young people into programs like GIS, and so it's important for them to see what a career pathway looks like. You can click on the profiles of the graduates here and find out where they work, who even hires a GIS grad, what are some employers out there. I wish I had this when I graduated. Think about the number of young people we can get into more STEM field, into technology, if we showed them how to apply their skills, their knowledge, with what they care about or what they are passionate about. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to make an interactive map as an educational tool for my nephew during the pandemic. 
It became a fun way to teach him geography, culture, and diversity in music. You can hover anywhere on the map, like Ireland here, for example, and listen to the sound of the harp. More schools are adapting interactive maps to make learning more fun and engaging. Now let's go to India. Now that sound may be new or strange to some of you. But for me, for me that's the sound of home. My culture, my roots, my upbringing and some precious memories with my dad. You see, these aren't just maps. They convey emotion, and most importantly, connect with people. And it's encouraging to see more organizations, non-traditional users, journalists, nonprofits, using interactive technology, digital maps to tell their stories. This one here amplifies the voices of the indigenous people from the Grand Canyon Trust. This is made by the Grand Canyon Trust, a nonprofit, and they've used this technology to talk about the culture and roots tied to the indigenous people from the Grand Canyon region. Untold stories, stories we don't often hear about. You can listen, watch, and learn from an interactive map. Making maps actually gets a little addicting once you start thinking spatially. I recently heard a presentation on Dayton's rich history and street names and the stories that surround these street names. Of course, being a visual thinker, someone that thinks in maps, I came home and made a map of it. Did you know that Dorothy Lane, for example, was named after John H. Patterson's daughter, Dorothy Patterson? Some of you may. But based on local stories, young Dorothy liked to ride her horses and ponies down a pathway, and so Patterson lovingly called it Dorothy's Lane. What other hidden stories can we uncover from the places and communities around us? How do we get to know our communities better through technology like this? History and all kinds of other stories are brought to life through technology like this. Pages of words. Yes, indeed, they are important. But in today's world, in the world of streaming content and fast-paced reading, combining technology and written narrative with maps like this brings to life stories. The beauty of this technology is that any one of us here can make these maps. It's accessible to anyone. I have used Esri's mapping technology, and there are many other emerging platforms available to the public. It allows us to take charge of our narratives or to tell them in the voices of those who are often not represented in our communities. My story as an immigrant to Dayton, Ohio, is going to be different from that of someone else here, but it's our combined stories that make up this beautiful community. I often get asked, Dina, you've lived in so many places, but where do you call home? Where are you really from? And of course, I can respond in a few sentences, but for me personally, Making a map is a great way to give folks an insight into why I think the way I do or love the music and food that I love, because so much of that is tied to the places that I've lived. I was born in a country that's a tiny dot on the map called Kuwait. Our family of four moved from Kuwait to India during the Gulf War. And when we came back, my mother and father decided to take my brother and I to Toronto, Canada for a better life and education. And I spent most of my life there, my schooling, college, my first job. It's always going to be home. Ten years ago, I moved to Dayton, Ohio, in the United States. And today, this is also home. So my question to you all is, yes, indeed, this technology is fascinating, and it's going to continue evolving, getting bigger and better. But how do we use these opportunities in front of us to work for us today, to meet our needs, to 
get to know our communities better. What are some personal narratives that you have? Perhaps a map can bring to life stories you're passionate about, untold hidden stories. It's no wonder I loved discovering a map in my storybooks because they made the stories so much more easier to understand and most importantly, they were memorable. Nothing brings your stories to life as much as maps do because they, they tell a different story that words alone simply cannot. And most importantly, they are remembered. <laughs>